Good morning, Croswell. As you saw, that, that is uh, what happened at VBS last week. But before we get going, um, for those of you watching online, we realize there are some issues going on in the back. Zane and I are scrambling to try to fix that. For those of you in-house, welcome. And uh, as you saw the video, um, that is all about what happened at VBS. And uh, thank you on behalf of Allison and Lauren. Uh, they said thank you for all of you who um, participated and helped at um, did all the work uh, bringing you, your your children here that was always necessary too uh, so on behalf of Allison and Lauren they say absolutely thank you thank you to this church for allowing that to happen as well um, if just a, a couple of quick announcements is the very first one is uh, somersault as you see on the very first uh, our front page uh, somersault starts tomorrow somersault is our youth uh, summer camp that we go to uh, be praying for um, all of the ones involved. There are 27 of us going. And honestly, this is probably the biggest group that I've taken to Somersault. So be in prayer for um, myself, uh, Joy, Philip, and Kim Clark um, as we're uh, the adults for the, for the trip. But also be in prayer for our students. That is the main focus is we really want our students to just really connect with God on a deeper level and draw near to God. Pray that um, a fire is... Uh, rekindled in their heart pray that God's glory is seen through it all that is the biggest prayer request I can ask of our church family that God's glory is seen through it all um, because of we will be at camp next week we will not have youth services this Wednesday night just so you know and Allison and Lauren are on vacation and we will not have children's services this Wednesday night as well so no youth no children's service this coming Wednesday night however uh, Pastor Charles has a fantastic study on uh, Wednesday nights that you are all welcome to and he said that children and youth are also welcome in there as well so if you want to bring them bring them as well it's, it's going to be a study for them as well he said um, so all are welcome it's a fantastic study if you haven't been coming on Wednesday nights come this Wednesday night and we'll also have choir practice on Wednesday night as normal as well um, so you come and be a part of that and last but not least um, is be in prayer for the Russell family um, John Allen Russell uh, went to be with the Lord this morning he passed away this morning so be in prayer for the Russell family be in prayer um, just for God's peace and comfort through that whole thing. Um, would you pray with me as we begin today's service? God, thank you so much for this morning. Will we come and just to be a part of worship to you, Lord? God, I pray, Lord, that you are glorified through this service. You're glorified through um, a children's message, through Pastor Charles's message, uh, that you're just glorified. God, I do pray, Lord, for the Russell family, um, that you can just give them the comfort that they need. Um, and the peace that they need, the understanding that they need. But God, uh, may we also celebrate his life, uh, Mr. John Allen's life, Lord. Uh, God, thank you again for a great week, the last week of VBS. Thank you, Lord, for the, what you're going to do in advance. I thank you, Lord, for in advance for what you're going to do in Somersault this coming week. I pray, Lord, for all of our students, uh, God, that they just draw near to you. Holy Spirit, may you just reignite a flame within them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
we'll sing when we maybe see the church. All right. Well, hey, guys. So what do I have here? Fruit. How many of y'all like fruit? Y'all love fruit? All right. Well, what do you see first? What is this? Apple. What is apples good for? Um, what is it good for? An apple a day keeps a doctor away. Why? What does an apple do? So an apple, it actually helps you with weight loss, believe it or not. Um, it actually helps you with um, digestive systems. It actually helps you with your heart. Um, you know what this is? You know what this is good for? How many of y'all like pineapple? Yeah? You ever had grilled pineapple? It's really the best. <laughs> it's the best. What is pineapple good for? It's good for your body, absolutely. It's good for your digestive system and all of that. Grapes? Y'all like grapes? Do you know that a grape actually helps you um, with your heart, believe it or not? It keeps your, um, your heart tickering really, really well. Do y'all know what this is? Cantaloupe. cantaloupe. You just got, do you like cantaloupe? Yeah? What is it good for? Anybody know? So believe it or not, it actually helps your eyes. I didn't know that until I looked it up. Um, and then you have honeydew. Do y'all know what honeydew is good for? Honeydew's down there. Now, honeydew is really good for your skin, believe it or not. So I need to eat a lot of that. Um, but, so that's fruit. So would it be weird if you went up to an apple tree and you're like, where's my orange? Would that be weird? If you went to an apple tree and but wanting an orange, would that be weird? Yes. So if you want an apple, what kind of tree do you need to go to? An apple tree. So if you want an orange, what kind of tree do you need to go to? Orange tree. That just makes sense, doesn't it? So in the Bible, we are given this verse in Galatians chapter 5. It says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. So those, those are the fruit of the Spirit. So when every, every Christian, when you accept Christ as Jesus as Lord, we're given these fruits of the Spirit. And how many of you um, are really good with joy? You have a lot of joy in your life. You're very happy all the time. What about love? Y'all love really hard? What about patience? Oh, hands went down. I, that's, I struggle with patience a lot too. What about uh, gentleness? Are y'all gentle? Somewhat goodness, kindness? So it would be weird just like it would be weird for us to go to an uh, orange tree to expect an apple, same thing with, with our walk with Christ. It would be weird if we're not producing these fruits. So we need to really be working on these fruits of the spirits. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Um, why do you think God instilled these fruits in us? Because just like these fruits are good for our body, those fruits are good for the Christ's body, the church, right? The body of the church. So when you're patient with people, when you love people, it helps the whole body, the church. Y'all see how that happens? Just as these fruits help our body, those fruits helps the global church body. Isn't that cool? And when it helps Christ's body, the church. So let's pray and just ask God to help us more, because I think we can all learn from that. We can, we can all be better stewards of and trying to be better, um, have more fruit in our life. So let's pray and ask God to help us to have more fruit in our life. God, thank you, Lord, that you've given these fruits of the Spirit to us by accepting you. But God, may you help us to develop these fruits of the Spirit. May you help us to love more, to have more joy, to have more peace, to have more self-control, to have more of these fruits in our lives. May you Lead us, Lord. Holy Spirit, may you lead us and help us to instill these fruits in our lives so we can um, help others and help your body and to glorify you through it all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good. Oh, Lord, my God, when Yeah.
Let's, let's pray. Dear Lord, I thank you for this day. I thank you for everyone here. I pray that you'll bless this service. Um, I thank you for being an almighty and a great God. Um, I pray that you will bless the week ahead of us for our country and our town, God. There's so much going on. I pray, Lord, that you'll just bless us, keep us safe. I pray, Lord, that you'll bless this time of offering. Be with Pastor Charles as he brings the message and just give us a great week. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.
As you're finding your seat, let me remind you that next Sunday will be Father's Day. Now, I know most of you don't get as excited about Father's Day as Mother's Day, but I hope you will. I hope you'll be here this coming Sunday, a week from today, and we'll celebrate our fathers. Um, I want to say a couple of thank yous this morning. First of all, I want to say thank you to the choir. Choir, y'all did great this morning. I know you had some missing, but you did a great job. And I want to say thank you to the youth that are on the instruments. Listen, guys and girls, y'all get better and better and better. Uh, thank you so much, youth, for the instruments. And thank you for everyone who helped with Vacation Bible School this year. We had a fun time in Bible school. So thank you to everyone who took part in that. Uh, if you would, let's join together in prayer. Father, I thank you today for our time to come and to share with one another in, uh, in singing, in praising, in sharing with one another in fellowship. And Lord, we come to sharing your word, to look at the truths that are there and to apply them to our lives so that we can become more and more like Jesus Christ. Father, for those that are here today with burdens on their heart, I pray that the word will bring comfort to them. For those that are here that do not know Jesus, may something we say today uh, help them to open their hearts and their lives to Jesus Christ. Now, Lord, we just ask you to guide this message. For it's in your name we pray. Amen. I want to know, how many of you in here have traced your family tree? Anyone in here faced, traced your family tree? Some of you have. I have tried, and I've gotten back to my great-great-grandparents. I'll not pass that, and I'll run into roadblocks because no one's alive anymore to remember but also because uh, a lot of my grandparents came from Europe. I have uh, grandparents, uh, great-grandparents that came from Italy, from Wales, uh, from France. I have uh, American Indian on my gr one grandmother's side. So it's hard to get records past a, couple of de a few generations. But I have been able to trace back to my great-great-grandparents. And it's fun to look at a family tree and to see from what, where we actually came from in our past and who are, we are part of our lives today. Now, I'm going to talk to you about a different tree this morning. Nathan talked to the children about that tree this morning, and that's the fruit of the Spirit of, that we can bear in our lives if we know Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. Uh, again, talking about ba Vacation Bible School, this is one of the passages that I learned way, way back in vacation Bible school, uh, many, many years ago, and I'm sure a lot of you did also. But in Galatians 5, 22 and 23, it says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. I always swap faithfulness and gentleness. That's just the way I do it. But um, those are the fruit of the Spirit. Nathan talked to the children this morning about having the fruit of the Spirit in your life and having the fruit of the Spirit in the church. I want to talk to you this morning about having the fruits of the Spirit in your family. Uh, for this month uh, and last month, I've been preaching on the family. And if you'll look at the bottom of your bulletin on the inside, on the second page on the inside, I want you to keep your eye on that. And let me do a grammatical correction here. It should say, check off the fruits of the Spirit that 
are at work in your family, not is. Uh, that's a vacation Bible school error. We were busy. But um, I want you to look at this as we, as we speak about these fruits. And I want you to mark on this as we go through. Is this fruit evident in your family or is it not evident in your family? You could put yes, no, or check mark and an X or whatever how you want to do it. But I want you to listen to me as I describe the fruit and then you see if that fruit is in your, in your family's life. Now, a family that is living for Christ, we should be bearing the fruit of the Spirit in the family, not just in individuals, but as a family. So I want you to see today what fruits are evident in your family. The first one that's mentioned, we're going to start there, and that's the fruit of love. The fruit of love manifests itself in unselfish caring for others, uh, even as God unselfishly cares for us. Uh, God is so unselfish that he gave us his one and only son so that our sins could be forgiven and we could be made right with him. Think about it in your family. Is unselfish love practiced in your family? Do you stand ready to forgive one another, to overlook the faults, to love each other in spite of. That's how God loves us. He loves us in spite of. I think about when I was growing up with my four sisters and my parents, uh, there were a couple of sisters, and one in particular, that she and I did not see eye to eye growing up. And I did a lot of things to aggravate her on purpose, and she did a lot of things to aggravate me on purpose. And I was, as I was uh, preparing this message, I thought about that. We were not good at showing unselfish love to one another. But I didn't accept Christ until I was 15 years old. Uh, so my, hopefully I've changed it then. But I hope in your family that you stand ready to forgive, stand ready to love in spite of. And that's, an unselfish love is hard sometimes, but that's what we should have in the family. If a family has that unselfish love for one another, it will spill out of the family to others around them, and they will be touched by God's unselfish love. Now, the second spiritual fruit is this fruit of joy. And this is a very misunderstood fruit by us today. Joy does not equate happiness. That's not what it means, okay? Joy is an inner feeling given to us by God's grace. And we know as a Christian that we stand forgiven in the eyes of God. And that brings us joy that cannot be taken away from us. A joy that is placed there by the Spirit that comes to abide within us. It is a feeling of knowing that God is in control. He's now taking care of us, and He is the one at the helm of our lives, leading and guiding and directing us. And we can put our full confidence in Jesus Christ. That brings us joy, to have that relationship with God. A family that possesses the fruit of joy has strength and confidence, knowing that God is taking care of them. Knowing without a doubt that God is taking care of them of your family. Now, I can only imagine a family with children in the world we live in today, how if you did not have this joy in your life, this fruit of joy, how you would be filled with fear all the time of what could happen to your children in this world we live in today. But if you have the fruit of joy in your family, you have that understanding and that confidence that God is taking care of you, and he's taking care of your children. So is your family filled with joy? The third spiritual fruit is peace. We look at our world today, and this is something that the world so desperately needs, but we are, it's so hard to get them to find this peace, because this peace can only be found through Jesus Christ. This peace is a peace that... God gives to us through our salvation when the Spirit comes to abide within us that everything is going to be okay and everything is okay in Jesus Christ. And it's a peace that even though things happen, that peace overrides these things 
and helps us to continue to know that God's got this. The fruit of peace is a harmony in our inner being that comes from knowing God. This peace comes from a right relationship with God, and it allows us to be at peace with ourselves and to be at peace with others. You know, uh, one of the big issues in our culture today is mental health. I learned when I was in seminary that mental health, 99% of it, is caused by your relationship with God. Either you're strong in your relationship with God or you're weak in your relationship with God. Either you know Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord or you don't. And if you do not know Christ as Savior and Lord, then the world is there to tear you apart, to rip you to pieces. Even if you know Jesus as Savior, but you're not allowing Him to be Lord of your life, sin can still get in there and really hurt you in a lot of ways. But if you have God in your life through Jesus Christ, and you are letting Him be Savior and Lord of your life, then you know He is in control, you are at peace with Him, and you are at peace with others around you. And it's a peace that cannot be taken away from you. Because this peace is given to you by God. A family that possesses the fruit of peace is at harmony with God and at harmony with one another. If your family is not in harmony right now with one another, then someone is not where they should be with God. Some relationship there is not right with God and it's causing disharmony. But when the family is at harmony with God, and with, then they're at harmony with each other. Ask yourself, is your family producing this uh, fruit of peace? The fourth fruit, spiritual fruit is that of patience. Now, I'll be honest with you. Of all the fruits on that tree, this is the fruit that's the smallest in my life. And I need to pour more fertilizer toward that root to grow that fruit. But patience is one that the devil can really get me with. Patience gives us the ability to love one another no matter what happens. We're still patient. We're still forgiving. We're still accepting. We are able to handle situations and not let it rip us apart and rip relationships apart. God, think about it. God is patient with us. So if God is that patient with us, and he is beyond patient with me, I promise you, God is so patient with me, then we should have that same patience for one another. We should have that patience within the family. Uh, I know in my family of seven when we were growing up, there were two bathrooms. But think about seven people trying to get ready at the same time. And you have a sister or two that's in the bathroom that's got to primp and curl hair and put on makeup and all that. And you have not had an opportunity yet to even take your shower, you know. Um, patience. I know that happens in families, but if we learn patience with one another, it, it produces a special bond in the family. So is your family patient with one another? It's a gift from God. It's a fruit that sh we should be making evident in our lives because we live in such an impatient world today. Everyone around us is so impatient now. Um, the fourth, I mean, the fifth spiritual fruit is that of kindness. Again, we look at the world around us and we see so little kindness taking place. But as Christians, we should produce this fruit in our lives and in the lives of a Christian family. Kindness allows us to bring together our inner character with our outer expression. If Christ in is in us, then Christ should be expressed through us and out to others around us. So that's where the kindness comes from. It comes from the spirit that is within us. When we, we, when we express ourselves to others with kindness, our words and our actions produce good and not bad in others' lives around us. Families that possess the fruit of kindness possess a growing love and a genuine concern for one another. It's amazing, those same sisters that I fought with growing up, 
Those same sisters and I love each other so much today and appreciate each other so much. I think it's because kindness grew as we grew older. It made it, we understood a little bit more about what it meant to be kind to one another. I hope and pray that the gift of the fruit of kindness is evident in your family's life. The sixth spiritual fruit is that of goodness. Now, the fruit of goodness allows us to work for good in our relationship with God and in our relationship with others. So there's something, if you're producing the fruit of goodness, you're not out to get even with your brother or your sister. You're not out to get even with anyone because you're going to want what is best for them in their lives. And working through goodness, you're going to help bring about what is good for them in their lives. You're going to watch out for one another. You're going to help take care of one another. Uh, goodness makes all the difference in a family. A family that produces the fruit of goodness works together to bring out the best in each family member and in each life situation that happens. The family pulls together to produce goodness in that situation. Now, the seventh fruit of the Spirit is that of faithfulness. And this is not the faith that I'm talking about when you accept Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. That's not the faith I'm talking about. I'm talking about faithfulness is in the Greek really equals the word trustworthy. Trustworthy. God is trustworthy with his, with his words and his actions toward us. We can look back as we are in Sunday school in the Old Testament at the covenant promises that God has made with mankind throughout history. And God is faithful. He is trustworthy to those promises. That's how we should be in our relationship with one another in the family. We should be trustworthy with each other. If you say you're going to do this for me, then I can take your word at it that you're going to, that you're going to be there for me. Let me tell you, there's no better feeling than to know that your brothers and sisters have your back. They're there to take care of you. They're, day, they're trustworthy. You know they're going to be there. Um, you, you expect your parents to be trustworthy, but to know your brothers and sisters are make a difference also. So is your family trustworthy? Are you watching out for no, one another? A family that possesses the fruit of faithfulness can trust each other in everything. And that is such a difference that it makes in a family situation when you know that you have each other's back. The eighth fruit of the Spirit is that of gentleness. Gentleness is one that people want to equate with meekness. And in fact, in some translations it does say meekness but meekness has a bad connotation in our society today uh it almost means someone that is pushed around someone that is used as a doormat but that's not what this passage is talking about and that is not what the fruit of gentleness is the fruit of gentleness means that a person has been brought under the control of jesus christ Jesus is now the master of his or her life. They do not yield to the temptations of the devil to lash out at someone, to yell at someone, to take revenge on someone. Instead, you are gentle in all things. When I think of gentleness in the family, um, and you might be the same way, who is the one person that automatically comes to mind when you talk about your family and you talk about gentleness. For my family, it was Mama. Mama was the gentle one for us in the family. I have one sister that is more gentle with everyone than the others of us are in the family. Uh, gentleness is certainly a gift. It's a fruit that we need to grow. A family that possesses the fruit of gentleness has Jesus as their Lord and Master of their lives. That, that's one of the fruits that grows the more and more that Jesus is Lord of your life. In fact, all the fruits grow more. They operate under Christ's control when, when uh, you have gentleness in your life. Now, the last fruit, and this is a very important fruit, and I want you to see if you have it in your family. 
The ninth fruit of the Spirit is that of self-control. Again, we can look at our culture today. And self-control has been thrown aside. It's been put in the trash, I think. Because it seems like people do whatever they want to do, no matter the consequences. There is no self-control in our culture today. Christians, we cannot follow that path. As Christians, we must have self-control through the Holy Spirit who abides within us. The fruit of self-control allows a believer to overcome the temptations of the devil, to not give in to those temptations, but to let them go, to walk away, to turn your back, to even run from those temptations. He or she is not swept along with the constant tides of sin in the world. I look at so many people today, and I think about uh, when I was growing up at the Gulf and Gulf Shores, and we used to go love to wade out into the water till it was about this deep, and as the waves would come in, we would ride the waves. You know, as a, uh, each wave, we'd ride the wave. And we had so much fun doing that. But every now and then, uh, now I know what it's called. It's called rip current. We didn't uh, talk about that back then, but uh, all of a sudden the currents would get a little stronger, the waves would get a little bit stronger, and they'd start pulling me a little bit further out and a little bit further out until finally I'd get so far out that Daddy would be yelling, Get back in the shore! Get closer! You know, because I allowed the, the tide to pull me out, the current to pull me further away from shore, and it was getting dangerous. That's what so many Christians are even doing today. You're out there riding the waves of temptation, and you're allowing each temptation to pull you a little bit further away from God, and a little bit further away from the truth, and a little bit further from what you should be doing as a Christian. And all of a sudden, you found, find yourself giving in to temptation. That's what the devil wants to do to us. But a family that possesses the fruit of self-control can avoid the temptations that this society, this culture, is throwing at us today. We do not have to give in to those temptations that are in our world. And I truly believe that a family that is practicing the fruits of the Spirit, that when temptation comes to one, then it should be involved the whole family. That one should be able to go to the parents or go to older brothers and sisters or one you feel good, confident in, and talk to them about the temptation you're going through and let the family help you get past that temptation. There's something about the power of more than one. The Bible even tells us that, that uh, two are stronger than one. And if the family pulls together when temptation happens, then you can get through that temptation much easier. So families need to practice self-control, have the fruit of self-control in their lives. Now, I've listed, this, the, I've listed the fruit to you. We've talked about the fruit. Uh, you've had a chance to write it down on your bulletin there. Uh, I want to ask you a question this morning. How healthy is your family when it comes to your spiritual health? Are you okay today, or do you need a booster shot? Are you okay today, or are your, is your family so sick that we need to get you to the spiritual hospital? Where are you as a family today when it comes to spiritual fruit? Does your family possess the fruits of the Spirit? Again, if you look at the list, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. Now, I'm going to ask you a very personal question. Which of these fruits do you need to work on? Think about it. Which ones are good in your life? I mean, you would be glad to, for someone to see the fruit of peace in your life, maybe, or the, peace, or the fruit of goodness. But what about patience and self-control? I grew up in Alabama, and we had a lot of fruit trees in the yard. We had pomegranate trees. We had kumquats. We had what we call satsumas, similar to y'all's tangerines. Uh, we had 
pecans, that's not a fruit, well, sort of a fruit. We had all kinds of things. Plums, oh, I love the plums. But you know what my grandfather would do? If there was a tree that happened to be there that stopped bearing fruit, he would work with it for a season or two. He'd trim it back, he'd get shape it up, he'd give fertilizer to the roots. But after a year or two, if that tree didn't bear any fruit still, guess what happened to that tree? He cut it down, he took it out, and he put something new there that would grow and bear fruit. Christian, we need to bear fruit. We need to have fruit evident in our families. I challenge you this morning to seriously look at this list. Look at it for yourself and look at it for your family. Families, I challenge you to go home this week and talk about it. Are these fruits evident in our family? Where do we need to put effort into to make this fruit more evident? And I promise you, God will bless. And here's how he blesses. The fruit becomes so abundant in your life that it spills over and others around you are able to enjoy that fruit. Think about that. If every Christian in the, in the United States, if every Christian family would bear fruit as we should in, through Jesus Christ, what a difference it would make in our society and in our culture. It would change things tremendously. May we be people who are evident with the fruit of the Spirit in our lives. As we come to our time of invitation this morning, uh, the altar is open for you to come and to pray. Maybe you want to come and thank God. Thank you, God, that you let me have the ability to bear patience in my life. Or, God, I would pray that you would help me to have self-control. Father, help my family. Help us to grow in these fruits. For those here who do not know Christ as no Christ as Savior and Lord, you got to start by getting planted in Jesus Christ. You do that by accepting Him as Savior and Lord, and then you are grafted into the branch. You become a part of the family of God. And then these fruits can be produced in and through your life. So today, you might be ready to accept Jesus as Savior and Lord. During the invitation, it's between you and God. Would you join me as we pray? Father, thank you for allowing us today to look at the fruits of the Spirit. Lord, there are some that I certainly need to work on more in my life. I thank you, Lord, that you've given my weak, where I'm weak in my life, you let my wife be stronger in those areas. So, Father, help me to grow in those areas also. Lord, I pray for each family here today. I know that the culture we live in today is on full attack against family. Father, what we're talking about today can help preserve families, can help families be stronger, and can help families stand up to the pressures of this world. So, Father, let us take this seriously, not just brush over it and pass by it, but to stop and really think about it and pray about it. Father, I pray for each person and each family here today that are in Christ that these fruits will become even more evident. For it's in your name we pray. Amen.